Hi. Breaking bread together in a meal like this is at the heart of senior co-housing. Common meals that the residents plan and prepare themselves typify the experience of aging joyfully and successfully in senior co-housing. I'm Chuck Durrett of McCammon and Durrett Architects. I've helped people design and build co-housing communities all over North America. And I wrote the book on senior co-housing. The Senior Co-Housing Handbook, a community approach to independent living. More about this valuable handbook later. But first, let's hear from some of these seniors about what co-housing has meant for them. We've loved it from the beginning. We like getting involved with our neighbors and all the activities that we can join if we care to. Some one will decide, gee, I want to go hiking this morning. And they'll get a few other people who are interested, send down a notice, and sometimes no one else will show up. Sometimes they'll have a dozen or more people. There is community involvement. There is camaraderie. There is sharing of ideas. Because we were creating what we wanted, there was a lot of ownership. These days, senior care often means just keeping seniors housed in their waning years. In co-housing, each individual has a chance for an active and vibrant life. You just don't move in and then you never see your neighbors. You're expected really to work within the group, have a job, take responsibility for it. It's amazing what these teams do. So much work, you know. We have a newsletter every month and they always write a little piece for the newsletter. I, I can do that. We have probably 30, 30 teams here that do everything that's necessary uh, to be done. Uh, we have the maintenance team, we have the, the common meals team, we have the uh, uh, gardening team, we have any kind of team you can think of. Everybody is on the board of directors. Everybody has a voice in what happens. We deal with that in using consensus. In a single family house, you have privacy, but not community. In co-housing, you have a balance of privacy and community. Where we used to live, we knew our neighbors, but really not well enough to count on. If they didn't have the support system that they do have here, I feel that my brother and I would be called on more to help with with little everyday things and also in emergencies that there wouldn't be someone to fall back on. The support that we've gotten uh, from the community, the caring that we've gotten from the community has just been phenomenal. If co-housing interests you at all, please read this handbook. And then when you're ready, you can attend planning workshops, for example, and get started. There was a lot of support uh, for us in building our community. The method was to attend workshops. I've never really attended a meeting that was so well organized and so well planned and so well executed. So we had community building workshops. One really important one was when we um, developed our vision statement. We also worked with Chuck on developing um, the design. Again, we worked from values first. This handbook has all of the steps needed to conceive, design, and establish the community. It answers most of the questions people have about creating co-housing. We like the idea of trying to age in place, to have a community that we could rely upon and stay here as long as possible and not have to be a burden to our two children. I'm 94 years old now, and if I was not living here, it just became clear to me I would have to be in an assisted living home. For seniors like us, these should be growing years, not waning years. And two of the most important elements of long life are staying active and staying connected. Co-housing is a great way to do both. I invite you to get the handbook and learn more about this community approach to independent living. And after you've read the book, please call me. We can arrange a one hour free phone consultation and you can start the process of living joyfully and successfully for the rest of your life.